everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I got two of my dresses altered, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Just my experience with it. It was my first time getting Lolita dresses altered or really anything altered. So if you don't know what to expect, maybe this will help. So I got March and Ribbon and Toy Fantasy, the original release, altered. When I received March and Ribbon in the mail, I thought it might fit me from the lace market seller's description, but I wasn't super sure because they were pretty different from what was on the library. So I tried it on and at first I thought it fit mostly because I could zip it up and I tried to wear it out one time when my girlfriend and I went out to eat and discovered that like, no, it did not fit. It sat like at the widest part of my rib cage and was too tight, so super uncomfortable. And when we went out to eat and I had my meal, I had to unzip it because it was just too tight and hide it under my cardigan. And I also realized it was too short when I went out in it. I hadn't looked in like a full body mirror, but then I realized that my petticoat was constantly peeking out and that it was just too short for me. I knew I was getting Toy Fantasy soon. And because I knew it was the original release, I had suspicions that it might also be too small. You know, older AP just tends to run a bit smaller. So I decided to wait until I had gotten Toy Fantasy as well. And lo and behold, Toy Fantasy fit, but I wanted it to be really comfortable since I knew I would be wearing it a lot since it was one of my dream dresses. And I knew I wouldn't be selling it anytime soon. For marching ribbon, I decided to use the waist ties because I felt I would need quite a bit of fabric. And if I just use like a blue fabric, it would be really obvious because what I needed was to have the straps lengthened as well as the bust area widened. The straps were the most important part to me because it was just too short for me to wear comfortably. I felt that maybe if I just got the straps lengthened, I would be fine because it wouldn't be sitting on the widest part of my rib cage. But I decided to not take the risk and just get both aspects altered at the same time. For Toy Fantasy, however, I did not want to sacrifice the waist highs. They're so beautiful with the heart at the bottom of them. So instead, I decided to use the halter neck ties. I was pretty lucky that Toy Fantasy has these because that way I didn't have to sacrifice the waist ties or use a random fabric, but I never wear those halter neck ties with my dresses. I don't find them comfortable with blouses. So that was a pretty easy sacrifice for me to make. So basically to figure out what I wanted to have them altered to, I put the dresses on and I tied them at the like little metal hook that exists on the side of the dress, but left it unzipped and I kind of took a deep breath to expand my rib cage and measured the space with a measuring tape from the widest part of the zipper on one side to the other. I felt that this would give me a pretty good idea of like how much of a gap there was when I like really needed to breathe. So I wanted to go for like the widest I would need instead of cutting it too close. For both of them, this gave me around two inches. So that's what I went with. And for the straps for marching ribbon, basically what I did was I just measured the amount of petticoat that was hanging out. I was kind of hesitant around here and this is where having a good tailor comes into play because I decided to go with two inches because I was worried about making it too long. But in the end, it was closer to like 2.5 or three inches that I actually needed. So I'll get to that later. Okay, so I took my two dresses and I went to the tailor that was across my street because um, it had really good reviews and they also had like a whole atelier, like you could see them working. So I felt that it would be quite professional. Like there was clearly an established business working on a lot of, I could see it like from my window, them working on it. So I went there and I brought it, but the person working behind the counter slash I think was the owner decided not to take the dresses and basically not to take the order. There's a couple reasons, I guess. The one that annoyed me the most is that he said it wouldn't look good because the waist highs don't have lace where the straps of Martian Ruben do. So fabric wouldn't line up and the lace wouldn't line up, which to me was kind of stupid because I don't really care. I just want to be able to wear my dress and not be told like it won't look good for me to make it wearable. Like I wasn't really there for his opinion on that. I just wanted him to do the job. But the other reasons I felt were, you know, fine. Like he said that it was going to be too difficult with the built-in petticoat and the lining, which some places will refuse to do that because they have to open the lining up and everything. You know, at least I guess he said no instead of doing a botched job. It just kind of annoyed me because I know that there's plenty of places who will do this and I didn't really like that he was kind of like 
trying to make a bunch of excuses about it not looking good. It's like, just say you can't do it, buddy. I was a bit bummed out, but I got a recommendation from Prince and I decided to go check out that tailor instead. And that went super duper well. So I brought it to her and all I had to do was really bring it and say like, this is too small in the waist, this one's too small in the waist, and this one's too small in the straps and just kind of explain what I wanted to her. And she didn't ask me to try it on or anything. I think cause it was pretty straightforward for an alteration. And then I left her with all my stuff and that was it. So it took about two weeks. It was supposed to be shorter, but she ended up getting other orders and she asked me to come pick it up a few days after the original date. But I said, look, I'll just come back next week. So yeah, it took about two weeks in total and it was $90 Canadian for both dresses. Marching ribbon was more expensive because of the strap alteration as well. Now I have to say she did a really amazing job. I'm going to be putting close-ups and videos here while I'm talking, but essentially for marching ribbon, what she ended up doing was she actually measured the strap on Toy Fantasy and then lengthened the straps on marching ribbon to match that instead of the measurements that I had given. I think she could tell I was a bit uncertain, but I really appreciate her going ahead and doing that because now it's really the correct length. Marching ribbon costed me uh, a waist tie, so I got the other waist tie back. I just have one waist tie now. And Toy Fantasy, she didn't give me any scraps or anything like that. So basically use both of the halter necks, which makes sense because they're about like an inch in width each. And she used quite a bit of fabric to alter them. So here's Toy Fantasy. Um, basically the alterations were done on the sides. So here, you can kind of see there's like a triangle and this is where she added room so you can see like the waist tie button is like much further from the original um, hem so that would have been there but now it's kind of displaced and it's the same on the other side so this is the side with the zipper and she added a bit more room here too you can see it's slightly smaller actually than on the other side and then on the inside of the dress she sewed like she opened the lining and then re-sewed the lining because the um, halter neck ties had lining too. So it looks really good, I have to say. Like, you can barely even see it on both the inside and the outside. Okay, so March and Ribbon, the sides were altered in the same way. So you have that like little triangle that was expanded here and a small one on the side with the zipper again. And on the inside, it looks exactly the same as Toy Fantasy, like the lining and everything. This one is a bit harder to see, but it's here. So it has that same triangle. The straps I feel like are what most people are curious about. So here's what it looks like. So this is from the waist highs. Obviously it doesn't line up like I was very well aware. I mean, there's polka dots on the dress, but there was none on the waist ties. Um, but I still think it looks really good. I mean, she did it in a way where it's like at the highest point of the strap. So when it lays flat or on my shoulder, you can really barely see it. And this is the original seam line of the dress. She didn't open a new one. It always had like a seam at the shoulder. So she opened it there and then basically made um, like the longer part, the part that's at the back instead of at the front. And it's exactly the same on both sides. So yeah, I mean, it's very nice. And also like my priority here was being able to wear my dress, not it necessarily being um, invisible that I altered it.
So a few things to note, I think when you're getting Lolita altered, first of all, of course, you're going to want to go to a place that is more experienced with like alterations other than just um, hemming pants. <laughs> a lot of places do really casual things like, like I mentioned, hemming pants, hemming sleeves, button repair, stuff like that, but they don't really have experience with altering the size of the garment. You want to look for a place that also advertises for like weddings or formal attire or couture, something like that, um, because generally speaking, those are garments that might have more restrictive sizing and those people will have experience with altering the size of a garment. Generally speaking, for things like zippers and threads, the tailor will have them, but for fabric, you'll have to bring it yourself, whether it's the waist ties or a different piece of fabric. Sometimes I've heard that they will find some or have some for you, but I think it's a safe bet to choose it yourself, especially if you want the colors to be really precise and that kind of thing. Some other things to consider is if you are getting a dress alter to size up, it will automatically reduce some of the circumference of the skirt. Basically, like, I don't think I'm gonna explain this well, but the skirt is gathered, and so that helps with the poof. Um, you can kind of see that, like, here, the fabric is gathered, and that's why there's those beautiful folds in the dress, but if you're adding space to it, it's automatically gonna reduce the amount of gather. So you might feel that that affects the dress. Personally, I didn't notice it in my Toy Fantasy and Marching Ribbon, maybe a little bit with Marching Ribbon, but I think it was kind of like a benefit to the dress because my petticoat was like overstuffing it before and now it just fits really nicely. If there are, if there's a zipper, if there's a built-in petticoat, if there's a lining, it's automatically gonna be more expensive. So if you're not sure about getting something altered, you should consider whether you'd rather just get the money back for the dress or pay for the alterations. Personally, I think if you're going to keep the dress or if you really want to, it's worth it to shout out like, 45, 50 bucks or a little bit more to get it altered. I mean, this is like a $300 garment. So $50 to alter it in the grand scheme of things is pretty reasonable, I think. And of course, a lot of people say this and a lot of people should say it. It's your dress. You should alter it as you please. And don't let anyone tell you that you can't sell it for as much or you won't be able to sell it. You know, honestly, time and time again, I've seen dresses that have been altered to fit bigger, sell for really good prices, if not sometimes more than the dress usually goes for because now more people can actually fit in it or people who wouldn't be able to fit in it without the alteration, now they don't have to go get it altered. So of course you're willing to pay a bit more. Just make sure you take your dress to a professional tailor. I think when you see pictures of dresses that were altered professionally versus not, it really, really shows a difference. I'm super satisfied with how my dress has turned out. The alterations are very subtle but for me, pretty drastic because the dresses fit significantly better now. So it's worth it to pay a better price. It's worth it to pay a bit more and have something that is a really quality alteration, especially if you're considering that you might sell the dress again in the future. That's all, not a super long video, and I know maybe not super in depth, but I just wanted to put out there my experience. Um, I know a lot of people are nervous about altering Lolita, and I was too. So this is me saying that it's worth it. You should get yourself altered. You should be able to wear your clothes and you should be comfortable in it. The vast majority of alterations are reversible. So don't hesitate. You know, if you happen to lose weight and want to get the dress reversed, you can. If you want to sell it and someone wants to remove the alteration, they can. But what matters is that you can wear your clothes right now in the moment and be happy and comfortable with them. That's all for today's video. If you have experience getting Lolita altered, please leave some details in the comments below. Maybe other people will be able to answer questions if you have any. And I will see you in my next video. Until then, bye bye.